literally almost every job that I've ever taken, I've not been qualified for. It's a weird pitch to have to like apply for jobs knowing you're not at all qualified for it. I got a full-time job working customer service. It wasn't great, but I had a job. There was one day that they posted a position and internally they were looking for a web developer. I read the description. I said, well, I'm not qualified, but I'm gonna apply because <laughs> I knew I could probably do it. So the hiring manager, after interviewing me for 10 minutes, he said, no, like you have no experience. I'm not giving you this job. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. I went back to my customer service job, but really just said, I'm not going to like take no for an answer. So I went out and I bought some books. Yes, books, like physical books. That does age me. I am aware of that. So I bought a book about HTML and I bought a book about cold fusion because I knew those were the two technologies that I would need in order to do that job because they were in the job description. And I like studied. I studied for like the next month. He found out one day and he came up to me about a month later and he's like, okay, I'm gonna hire you. We're gonna give you a shot and we're gonna see whether or not this works out. He liked the fact that I like put the initiative, try and like learn it on my own. I know I'm smart and I knew I could do it. As soon as I learned it, I knew I could do the job. I got another position where I was an application developer and I had no experience again doing that. And I went into the interview and I was like, listen, I don't know this, but I know I can do this. Like I did this when I became a web developer. I don't know the technology, but if you give me uh, X amount of time, I know I can learn it so that I can support this. And they gave me the job again. That's been my pitch for almost every single position that I've applied for. It's a weird pitch to have to like apply for jobs, knowing you're not, a, not at all qualified for it and saying, I don't know it, but I know I can learn it. I'm out there like trying to learn how to do my job and I'm on Google, duh, 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 duh. like, how do I do this? I found Stack Overflow. I love this site. This is like amazing. Like it's totally helping me do my job. This is like incredible. So I got very, very involved with Stack Overflow as a user. And my end goal was to work for Stack. I love everything about the company. I love the mission of the company. I love the fact that it helps so many people. And I said, I'm gonna work at Stack Overflow. Like that was it. That was like what my goal was. So I kept always kept looking for like jobs. One day they posted a job for a entry level, like support type of a position. And I applied knowing I was way overqualified for the job, but I really wanted to work here. But they decided that they were going to offer me a position as a community manager, which meant I was going to get out of being technology for a little while. So I became a community manager. So I was like, I'm hired. Yes, like almost there. Like I've, I've got been hired. Now I just need to get back into tech somehow. So this opportunity came up. They're looking for people who potentially want to help support the SQL servers. Do you want to do this? And I was like, yes. It's exactly the job that I've been wanting. They hired me as DBA. Literally almost every job that I've ever taken, I've not been qualified for, but I work my, my butt off so that I can do the job. But yeah, that's like my story. So Tatiana is also in the chat asking, what did you say in your resume to get to the interview step? How did you pass the resume screening process without the job required skills? For most of the jobs I had, I would say, enough basic that I could like explain that I had like a technical kind of a background. While I may not have had all of the skills needed for this particular role, they were looking for somebody who maybe had like a couple years of tech experience. And I was like, that's me. I have a couple years tech experience. You can't have the same resume for everybody because you want to at least tailor your application process to whomever it is that you're applying. So if they're looking for specific skills, and you know you may have some of those skills, but not all of those skills, you can wordsmith. You can wordsmith it and, you know, wordsmith those sentences to make it sound like you are solid in what you do know, which could apply to that particular position. I think I probably did a cover letter, as honestly, that said, you know, when I took this job, I didn't have the skills and I learned on the job. A lot of people think that, like, cover letters are old school and not to do them, but honestly, I 100% think cover letter is important because for one, it like, gives you the chance to express your passion for why you wanna work at that company. Without offering that, 
you're just any other resume that comes through. Like if you can tailor your resume and your cover letter to specifically for that company, it's more personal and you can like express things a little bit better via a cover letter versus like just your resume. I know when I'm screening a resume or screening like candidates or something like that, a cover letter is going to make a big difference. Colleen wrote in saying, I admire your confidence. Did you ever struggle with imposter syndrome? And if so, how did you overcome it? I struggle with imposter syndrome every single day still. There's days that I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing for my job. Like, I still have to look up stuff. There's plenty of days that I'm like, yeah, I know SQL Server. Okay, I have to use the date added function. What, do, what order do I have to put those <laughs> the parameters in? Like, I don't remember. Imposter syndrome, I don't think it ever goes away. Even people who say that they don't feel it, they probably feel it and they just don't want to recognize it. But I 100% deal with imposter syndrome every single day. There's not a day that goes by that I'm like 100% confident in everything that I do. You're always going to second guess yourself. It's just choosing to like not let it like impact you, I guess you could say. Like I ask for help all the time for stuff, be it for coworkers and stuff like that. Uh, on Twitter, I'll ask for help if I'm having a problem with something. I mean, you just, you don't know everything, period. And so I don't think imposter syndrome ever goes away. If I'm looking for opportunities to learn on the job, how do I gauge what a realistic job posting looks like for me if I lack specific skills and experience that they're looking for? This is kind of a tough question, honestly. I would approach it as like, what do you want to learn? What do you bring to the table for the job? And what do you want to learn? So like, if you're looking at a job and it has like a whole bunch of like requirements of like, I don't know. C Sharp and JavaScript and I don't know what else. Name them all. Python. And, and you know that you don't want to learn any of those kinds of things. Maybe that's not the job for you to apply for. Pick out things that you know you want to learn or that you're passionate about. I was passionate about SQL. So I was like looking for jobs that had SQL Server listed. Look at what the requirements are and see, is it worth it for you to apply to that role and have to learn all those things? Because you're the one that's going to have to do the work once you get there. You've got the ramp up, you've got to learn, and you've got to be able to like do the job once you get there. Even if you don't know it, you still have to do the job. There are ways that you can like show your experience without necessarily having the, the experience in a job. Stack Overflow answers or questions on Stack Overflow, or you have a GitHub profile where you've got like code that you've like done. You know, there there are ways that you can like demonstrate that you have that you have knowledge and experience in some things. I mean, even a blog. Blog about the stuff that you like. Have a link to your blog or whatever on your resume, and you know, you use that as like your platform for your passion about something. So like if you start learning how to do certain things, I'm, I'm not a software developer, so I'm not going to try and throw jargon around. Um, but like if you, you can, though, that, it would be fun. Uh, let's let's just do it. <laughs> you know how to Python. You could always say I can Python for you. There you so go. Like Perfect. Yeah, see that? <laughs> Perfect. That sounds right. <laughs>